Okay, a little bit more on the Jameek Lowry story. One thing is I just posted that they said the official cause of death was spinal meningitis. Um, another thing, his mother had made some comments when she was at City Hall that made me think a bit about the FBI and he kept pointing to somebody in the corner who was trying to kill him. But, you know, taking those two bits of information, there's not a lot you can do with it. Now, I'm going to play a part of what his mother said, and she was speaking to, I believe, the guy is the mayor, but then I found somebody else, and I took his info off of Facebook, and I'm going to put it on here. Apparently, Jamik was working with the Patterson police to try to get custody of his child or children back. He was an informant. He was giving them information on people in the neighborhood who were selling drugs, then they were supposed to in turn help him get custody back but they weren't helping him at all right so allegedly he went to the fbi and according to the man that you're going to hear he thought that one of the cops found out that he flipped on them right and that that's why he was terrified. How true this is, I don't know, but it kind of matches up with a bit of what his mother was saying too. So, I don't know, but I know that spinal meningitis, ecstasy pills, they don't bust your eye socket. They don't leave bruises on your face. That doesn't happen. So there's something dirty in Patterson. Somebody was look um there. Somebody there. Y'all look at it real good. The shadows. It's the shadows. It's somebody was there. My son was not crazy, not at all. He was crazy for helping these cops, thinking they was gonna help, do what they said they was gonna do. They gave him a choice. No, they ain't giving him no choice. Oh, they knew he was gonna do whatever he could to get his kids. That's the reason why he worked with the cops. Oh, you do this, get this person. I'm gonna get you to get your kids out of diapers. I'm gonna get you to get apartment wherever you wanna go, out of Patterson. Out of Patterson. No. Yeah, well, and they was gonna pay for the rent for a year, for a whole year, public service and everything. He felt like after that happened, nobody, excuse me, nobody did that. Nobody followed what they did. But do y'all know? It's gonna be justice coming. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get justice be before I leave this world. If it kill me, I'm gonna get justice. And I feel, and I, I, I think this need, man, this for you. Cause I think you do with the cops. I appreciate you calling me and for my condolence, giving me my condolence. But the problem is, you got a Facebook page. I had just got one, not recently though. But Facebook goes with answering questions and messages. I've been inboxing you. My son been inboxing you for three months asking for help. So for a fact, he didn't get that, you didn't answer. And then you gave me, I sent you the video. So when I wish this video was sent to me through my inbox, I looked at it and I says, well, nothing wrong here. It's a crazy guy and, you know, the cops are standing back and waiting around and, you know, they came and they took him away and then he's dead, you know. You know, what can you do? He was not drugs or delusional or something. But that's what they want you to believe. They want you to believe this is just a case of some guy who was delusional, came in the police station, acting up, and then he, you know, whatever he was dealing with, he died from that. The prosecutor's office ran down there, the family said, grabs the guy's phone from him and whatever evidence he had on him so nobody will get a hold of it. So I said, okay, that's kind of suspicious. So I started talking a little more with the family and friends and the family and things like that. This is more, more with the friends of the family. I haven't really spoken with the family yet. So here's what I learned. In the beginning of this video that you're going to hear, I want you to listen to some key points. The guy is saying this A hole by the wall. So he's identifying a police officer 
standing over there, around there, that is one of the officers that is trying to kill him. And may have been one of the officers, allegedly, that chased him and he ended up running, end up running into the police department for protection and for safety. So he kept on in the video, and first you think he's just a rambling guy, but you gotta listen very carefully to what he's saying. So he shows up there, it's about 3.52. He's not videotaping them, he's live taping them. So once it goes live, it goes online and you can't pull it back. But if you're videotaping and you get your hands on the phone, you can delete the video. But we also know that's on that video, on his phone is, and I'm wait, we'll get that in a second. Ask me and I'll remind me, I have to tell you that. So he's playing, saying, please, he's begging, begging for his life, saying, please don't shoot me. I'm gonna let you hear it, but I wanna go through some points. Um, he identified the officer around the wall. Why are y'all trying to kill me? Y'all think I told on y'all. Uh, somebody um, uh, tried to kill me. Somebody over there um, tried to kill me. So he's, he, he's identifying a police officer around the corner that is apparently hiding from the camera. And he's trying to call him out. Um, somebody over there uh, tried to kill me. Um, y'all pissed. Let's listen to the words very carefully. Y'all pissed, right? Y'all get pissed. Uh, somebody help me. So he's begging for his life now. Somebody called my mother. He knew something was going to happen this night. And then he goes, um, uh, the cops trying to kill me. They think I'm a witness. I want you to hold on to that thought. They think I'm a witness. They think um, with the FBI. Um, if I'm dead by the next hour or two, they did it. Police officers in Patterson, New Jersey. Um, and then he goes, FBI, I didn't want to work with them. Now, he may sound like he's rambling, but I want you to listen very carefully to what he's saying. Didn't want to work with them. I turned my back, they asked me. And then he goes on to say um, uh, something he, he, uh, he promised. Um, he, he just walked in. Um, Anyway, he walked in, he begged for, for water, they wouldn't give him the water. Um, and then he keeps on saying, please don't kill me. Um, please don't kill me. And the, the video ended, and then he's killed. He's, died. he's dead. So I'm going to show you some photographs. It's a little bit disturbing. Um, but I want you to take a look at it and tell me whether or not this is just speculation from the friends of the family who's contacted me. So this guy, here's what I've learned, um, is saying give his phone to the FBI. Give his phone to the FBI if he's caught. So here's what I know that nobody else knows. The Harold News took the story and talks about just a disturbed man that went in there and died when he left the police department. That's not what this story is. You've got to listen to this guy. He's not really rambling. So we know that several police officers were arrested by the FBI in the city of Patterson, about five of them. So here's what people told us. The police department was working with this kid to go out and arrest drug dealers and people in the community. The police department was using him. In all of this, he was having problems with his getting his kids back from Dyfus because he had some drug problems and stuff like that. The police department allegedly promised him that if you help us go into the community and do these drug, identify the drug dealers and be like a snitch, we will help you get your kid back. That was the deal that we were told. So after a while, he didn't get his deal, his kid, and the police department allegedly lied to him and was getting information. So what happened is he turned, allegedly turned on the police department and informed the FBI about what the cops were doing. And that's why he said, if I'm dead in the next two hours, and that's why he said about the FBI in the video, I didn't want to work with them. So he's telling the guys, I didn't inform of you all, I didn't go as a witness, so somebody informed the FBI about these cops. They're thinking is him. He's got information on them. He's a witness and he's telling us, he's talking to us. 
He's not talking to them. He's talking to somebody. He's begging for help. He's crying for help. He knew he was going to get killed. He knew it. Um, because he knows these cops. He knows what they're capable of. You know, so he's identifying they're going to kill him. The cop that was chasing him was among those cops because he said it from the beginning. This a-hole is hiding around the wall over there. That's the one of the ones trying to kill me. So one of those cops there is he's fearing for his life. So he leaves this place at about 3.52. Leaves the police station at 3.52. Gets to the hospital at 6 o'clock. Where did he go from 3.52 to 6 o'clock that he end up in the hospital, that they actually entered him into the hospital? So 4, 5, 6. So two hours. The man stated within two hours I was going to be dead. And in two hours, he was dead. He was telling us they were going to kill him. And when I'm hearing the story, it more makes sense what he's saying than what the Harold News is reporting. And maybe I'm not saying they're covering up, but they do soft news. And what family, the friends of the family is telling me. Everything that this man has said in the video turns out to be identical to what's happening within the whole big picture. He was informing the cops they were arresting drug dealers. He, when the FBI approached him, asked him what the cops were doing. He probably told the cops what they were doing, or maybe somebody else told the cops, the FBI, what the cops were doing. Eventually, they wanted to get him for it, because they probably thinking he snitched. He was the one that snitched. And you can hear his language. You can hear his words. And he's playing out his own murder, allegedly, his own death, which happened for you, telling you, telling us exactly what's happening. So in his language, we have the evidence. Also on the phone is email communication we heard between him and the police department of what the transactions were supposed to be between them and the drug dealers and the people that the cops wanted to go after. So he was an informant. Makes sense that the, the um, prosecutor rushed down to the put to his bedside and grabbed the phone before his family can get their hands on the phone. The phone goes directly to those emails. No one else knows. I asked all, all of the, the friends of the family, does anybody know how to get into the, the Gmail account? Nobody knows. But when you pick up a phone and you look at it, my phone right now, if, if somebody, I would get killed and somebody would have logged in my email, just log in, just click the, the, the icon, goes right to my email, I don't need a password. So easy for the prosecutor or anyone else who got a hand on their phone to go in and delete all those emails. So we'll take a lawsuit and we'll take somebody outside of Passaic County. This is a prosecutor, remember, that stands and fight for police officers even when they commit these horrendous crimes. She refuses to go and prosecute that officer that just got um, nine years in prison. Remember, the city council got involved, but they didn't really get involved. They backed off on her. And I'm going to show you why the city council backed off on her. The father took a whole group of people to went to speak to the, to the prosecutor. Didn't get to speak to her, they said. Only some deputy prosecutor. And it took a long time to get that cop upgraded to the murder charge. And still the family is not happy with that. Um, so, in this case, it's very suspicious. Listen, I'm going to step away. I'm going to move back. I want to play this for you, so I set it up where you can hear it. And you're going to listen to this man's voice yourself. And you tell me, I want you to listen to the things that I just said, that he said, so you can hear it for yourself.